So to get started, let's take a short tour around the model. The first thing to note is that we have several sections in this model. So it starts with the info section, then we have the out section with output tabs. So prepared for PowerPoint, that is. Then we have the calc section with the core calculations. For example, putting together the top 10 payables and receivables. Next to that, we have the interface section and the input section. The thing here is it's easier to start with an explanation of the input section. So let's do it like that. The input section is about input data. So for example, here we have the investments and depreciation as planned by the client. And the idea of the interface tab is to bring the data into a format that's used in the model. So let's look at another example here. That would, for example, be an input from the integrated business plan that's mapped to this model's timeline here. So here you can see this is on a weekly basis, whereas over here, this is coming from a monthly base. And this is why we need this interface section to do some additional transformations to the data before we can readily use them in the calc section over here. And at the very right, we have a config section that's about yeah, technical constants, things like that. So for example, here we have the start date of the model. We have some constant to calculate K euros from euros and other things like that. Now let's do another walkthrough. And this time I will touch on each tab in every section. So we do this a little bit more detailed. Here, uh, when we start with the info tab, you may have noted this short description here. It doesn't have to be much, just put something in. Then I usually like to keep a list of the open to do's here as well. In the out section, it starts with the financial status, which is not that much work to put together. Here I have a separate table to come up with the chart. If you're using Thingsell, this will be a lot easier, but in Microsoft Office as such, it's sometimes helpful to do a bit of a workaround. For example, here, if you want those line breaks, then we have the liquidity plan that contrasts cash receipts with cash payments and a bit of other things down here. And this gives us then the liquidity chart that's also over in the PowerPoint file. Here we have the overview of the financing parties that I later did not write copy like this because it didn't look quite right and I rebuilt it in PowerPoint. Here we have the top 10 receivables and payables, also payables before deferrals and after deferrals. With some conditional formatting applied uh, to do the heat mapping. Here we have the calc section, which is the input for the top 10 payables and here top 10 receivables. So what I did here is that I calculated for each of those companies here the rank based on their due payables or receivables, or here receivables. And that's what I used to sort them. You could argue that there's a sorting functionality here in Excel, sort and filter, and I could have used that. I didn't though, because that would somehow yeah, make my worksheet more heterogeneous and I don't like that. So I just calculated the rank and then used the rank for a lookup. And I'll just show you later how to do that. Here come the payables and receivables, also in an aggregated format. I distinguish deferred and non-deferred and all the external and intercompany here. Here the same thing for the receivables, just that we don't have any deferred receivables. The interface tab as already introduced. And here the input tabs. So there are several ones actually here. And also here it's important to note that we do not have each one of these at the very beginning of the project. So for example, this here is an output from the integrated business plan. And we just won't have that at the very beginning of the project. So usually you start out with putting together the booked payables and receivables, um, use the overview of the accounts and put together the financial status. And after a while, when the auto work package is well making some progress, you can then use this as an input as well. Other than that, we have here the investments and depreciation as just introduced, something the client can provide you with. The payroll also important. Here we have the deferred payments as an input, the payables and the receivables as exports from the ERP system of the client. So you can ask the accounting department for that. As you can see here, we have some columns that are shaded in yellow and that's because these were not provided in the export. So these were calculated. I'll show you how to do this as well. So this is also an opportunity to show you a bit around in Excel, a bit of data ranking tricks. 
Here we have an overview of the accounts and the bank loans and interest expenses on a monthly basis because this is also used in the integrated business plan. Exchange rates, not that much to say about. And here, as already introduced, the Config Hub, which is primarily technical in nature. But also down here, we have, for example, the intercompany lookups to check if a supplier, for example, is intercompany relationship.